Hi, I'm Ian. Thanks for tuning in to another ForgottenWeapons.com video. Today we have the Australian Leader Dynamics T2 Mark V rifle to take a look at. This is an interesting piece, uh, largely from a manufacturing point of view. Uh, there are about 2,000 of these rifles made it into the United States, so there aren't all that many around. Importation stopped a good 20 or 30 years ago, and now uh, we're fortunate to have one here to take a look at. So these were developed in the late 1970s and produced in the, starting in the early 1980s. They were designed, the, the intention was to use, have the Australian military use these in place of their uh, FNFAL rifles. That did not end up happening. Um, there was a, briefly these were available on the civilian market in Australia before gun laws were changed and prohibited this type of rifle over there. Um, they did have a brief showing in the United States. Um, again before the company went under, before gun laws changed to restrict the importation of this type of rifle into the U.S. So they're not all that common anymore, but they're a real interesting example of a low-tech, easily manufactured uh, repeating rifle. So let's start with the basics. Um, the, the T2 is very similar to the AR-18 in design. The AR-18 was intended to be, uh, it was an all-stamped manufactured rifle. Uh, the idea was to produce a, a weapon for less industrialized countries uh, to, to act as a, an analog to the AR-15. So instead of having a, a cast and milled lower receiver, the AR-18 had an entirely stamped lower receiver as well as a stamped upper receiver. So this made manufacturing simpler, quicker, and cheaper. The Leader Dynamics took the same ideas and added a few innovations of their own to come up with what is really a pretty interesting rifle, despite looking a bit simplistic. So let's take a closer look inside it. Disassembly, of course, begins by unloading and ensuring the weapon is clear. We have an ejection port here. All right, we're good. To disassemble the leader, you start by pressing in this tab, which allows you to unfold the upper from the lower. Like so. And we can pull out the bolt and recoil assembly, all this one piece. The remainder of the gun is disassembled simply by removing this E-clip, which allows the pivot pin to come out and the upper and lower to be separated. There we go. You can see we have a very simple lower receiver here. The fire control parts are very similar to the AR-15 in design. A bunch of stamped components in there. The hammer is investment cast. And you can see the dividers here that do things like position the magazine release, um, act as a, a front stop for the magazine and a, an opening here, these are all simply U-shaped pieces of folded metal that are spot welded in place. So this, this makes for very simple manufacturing. Also point out the buttstock has its own little dovetail, stamped dovetail. So exchanging buttstocks or developing a different style of buttstock is very easy. Just something that'll slide in and one screw holds it in place. Now, the upper receiver. Hand guards are held in place with a pair of Allen head screws. It's a two piece plastic hand guard, pretty simple. And we have a non-reciprocating cocking handle 
that's in here. You can see it's attached to a spring on the front of the handguard. And then this tube interacts with one of the guide rods on the bolt carrier. So, allows you to charge the gun. And the operating system for the leader is a, uh, a short stroke gas piston. You can see here it's built in three pieces so it can be disassembled. Pull this, move that one, and then that one. And then we can pull out the piston itself. When we look here, you can see a slightly discolored spot on the front of the bolt carrier. That's where the gas piston impinges on it. So it's just like that. And you have a little bit of, of play when the rifle fires, and then inertia carries the bolt carrier the rest of the way back. So if we look at the upper receiver, you can see this is also a very simple uh, component to manufacture. This started off either as a piece of commercial square tubing or as a flat sheet, bent into three pieces, and then there's a spacer here, spot welded in place, and a similar piece up here and that dimensions the, the bottom surface of the receiver. The trunnion, you can see the trunnion here. It's basically just a uh, cube of steel with a couple holes drilled in it. The barrel is threaded in, and then you have three holes on top. The small one here is for the right-hand bolt guide. The left one is a little larger, and that is, that's to allow charging handle to pass through. And the middle one, of course, is for the gas piston. Almost all the other components on here are of similar construction. The carry handle and rear sight base are all a single component. Started out flat, stamped into shape, and then bent accordingly. The rear sight on the leader is uh, round, has three different apertures set up for one, two, and three hundred yards. To change the sight, you don't just turn the wheel, you have to actually push in this spring-loaded piece, and then you can rotate it to a new setting. That prevents you from accidentally rotating the sight partway or, uh, or just unintentionally changing it from one aperture to another. The windage is just a basic screw assembly turned on the side. Even the front sight components, you can see the retainer here for the handguard is one stamped piece of, of sheet steel. Now let's take a look at the bolt and bolt carrier of the leader. It's this uh, bolt is actually very reminiscent of the, uh, the early 1960s Winchester design, the Winchester 100, which also had a triangular bolt. Here's one of the Winchester bolts for comparison. And the idea is the bottom lug on these picks up a cartridge out of your magazine. And then when the bolt is locked all the way in place, it rotates and engages three locking lugs. One interesting aspect of the, the leader design, this is very, very similar, other than the bolt head itself, to the AR-18 uh, bolt and bolt carrier. However, the AR-18 has uh, the bolt carrier separate from these guide rods and springs. Whereas on the leader, the springs and rods are actually captive on the bolt. There's a uh, pin here that you can see, or not a pin, uh, a lip that hold, that prevents the, the two guide rods from coming backwards out of the bolt. So on the AR-18, when you open it up, you first have these spring-loaded guide rods that come out, and then you have to pull out uh, the bolt uh, bolt carrier. On the leader, this is one contained unit, which is a nice addition. For comparison's sake, we have the leader bolt carrier assembly here, and then we have the AR-18 bolt carrier assembly. So in practice, they would both be compressed a bit. But of course, on the AR-18, these are a separate component and come out on their own. 
the 18 also has a charging handle directly on the bolt, which acts as a separate component as well. So you can see the difference in the bolt faces here. Obviously the AR-18 is very closely related to the AR-15 and shares its bolt face design, where Leader um, took the best of both worlds. He has, this is arguably a, a cleaner, better, and simpler bolt face, especially if you consider the, uh, the challenges of manufacturing a seven or eight lug bolt. Triangle's a lot easier to make. So. Although the AR-18 didn't take off commercially all that much, um, this system with the dual guy rods, dual springs, and the, the squarish bolt carrier has been duplicated on a lot of uh, modern designs. Uh, the Japanese Type 89, um, the British L85, the, uh, the H&K G36, among others, use this type of system. We have here a, uh, an AR-18 bolt on the left and a British L85 bolt and bolt carrier on the right. You can see they're extremely similar. Uh, same basic idea. Um, the AR-18 may not have become a success, but it, it, its major components were certainly copied by other successful designs. <laughs> and also by the leader. All right, let's go ahead and start putting this rifle back together. We're going to start with the gas piston. The rearmost piece goes in first, then the front piece, and then the middle. You may recognize this sort of design from a bunch of other uh, rifles. The, the Russian Tokarev rifle has a gas piston done like this. The German G43 does. Um, it's kind of the accepted way to do a short stroke piston this way. Um, it allows you to disassemble the piece, but it also then, when fully assembled, doesn't have enough travel to come apart while it's in use. So, there we have that. Next up, we'll put on the left hand guard with the charging handle. See, the charging handle fits into the larger hole here in the trunnion. And the hand guard sets there. Put that nut in place. Now we flip it over. We have the opposite hand guard goes on, and our two screws to hold the whole deal in place. Those down. We now have a fully reassembled upper assembly. Next up, we will attach the lower. Goes through there. Put in our cross pin. Snap on the E clip, and then bolt assembly goes in, snaps in place. And there we have a reassembled leader. So thanks for watching. We appreciate you stopping by ForgottenWeapons.com. Stay tuned, and we'll have another video a little later on of us out at the range with this guy. We'll take a look and see how it shoots. Thanks for watching.